Hello, you buddy and artists out there. Welcome back to Homeschool Together. This week was art, prehistoric art, and really exploring the, the, the mind of what we always, you know, laughingly call, you know, the Cro-Magnon man, you know, Neanderthal. It's really amazing to see the, the beauty of the art that they were mm -hmm. able to produce to know that, you know, a lot of the ideas that we had about these, you know, early man is, you know, not some just cave, you know, club wielding man sitting in a yeah. cave. They had thoughts, they had emotions, they had dreams, and they put that into their art, both in sculpture and in paint. And that is what we focused on this week. Yeah. Uh, the cave art and then using natural materials because they did not have acrylic paints they could get at Walmart. <laughs> right. Uh, so we went ahead and uh, tried to use uh, natural art this week and, right. and as much as we could. So this was the art and tool, prehistoric art and tools week, yep. which is kind of, this is- It was a nice, it was a nice change. Yeah, this is Build Your Libraries last week. This is how they wrap up their curriculum. And so it's kind of fun. They've gone through all these stages and now they're giving special focus to this mm -hmm. part, which yeah. I think it's cool that they didn't just she didn't just wrap that into the other weeks. It well, has lot, its own dedicated yeah. week. In, in almost all the books that we've referenced over the last three or three weeks or so, when you're talking about early man, they always had sections talking about the art and yeah. the cave art and everything. And, and I was, you know, purposely skipping those sections. Yeah, it was just like bookmark to the books. Book, we'll yeah. talk about this the last week. Yeah, remember to come back. This is this is something we got to come back to. But it was good to do that because it all came back at the end where we were able to kind of see the mind, into the mind of yeah. an early early human. And that, that was really, really cool. So do you want to get into it? Let's get into it. So, oh, this, this doorstop of a book, Art That Changed the World. So we've been talking about books where we are using a portion of it for this and we're going to be able to use it for years to come. Yep. And this is a good example. I did not buy this book for prehistory, but it just so happened yeah, right. that the beginning of it talks about prehistoric art. Yep. Um, and it. Oh. so it goes, it goes year by year and, and it's all about how art influenced, how culture influenced art and how art changed things. And, and just really beautiful it's drawings. It's really neat. I believe this is the bowl in Spain, if I'm right. This is in Spain. Yeah, this is in the cave in Spain. Um, and then I believe they also have some paintings here of the Lascaux Caves. And there may have been another one here, the Lascaux. So this is not well. at, obviously we're doing this with the first grader. This is not at a first grade level. This is a much higher level book. But the gorgeous large illustrations really make it worth it. So you can look at those illustrations. You can read the caption quickly, summarize for your learner. I think yep. it's definitely worth it. Absolutely. And a great book to invest in if you're interested in art in general. Right. And I like that we're going to be able to use this through ancients and medieval mm -hmm. and early modern and all the time This periods. is going to be coming back over the next three, four years. Right. This so even if art isn't a focus during the mm -hmm. time periods we're studying, we can use this book and fold in the art as it goes along. I'm really in love with that idea because I, I'm not very well schooled in art yeah. or art history. And I think that this will really help us get an appreciation for what was happening at that Absolutely. time. Absolutely. So, Carrying on for that, book. The Arts, A Visual Style. This is another DK book, so we, we constantly buy not just one DK book, not just two DK books. All the DK books. All the DK books. And again, they had a whole section right up at the beginning talking about prehistoric art. And so this is at a little bit of a lower level than yeah. this book, but what this book is specifically about is not a timeline, whereas The Art That Changed the World is all goes by timeline. This one specifically talks about different styles. Yeah. It kind of goes by time, but it's going to have whole sections on oil painting and yeah. watercolor and impressionism. And so this is going to be, I think, the book where you'll find in the time, in the, the art that changed the world, yeah. this is the timeline that we're doing. Then you'll use this book to maybe deep dive into that style styles, yeah. and really kind of explore the style. Yep. So they covered basically the, the one in Spain, and then this one is obviously in Lascaux. Um, in the bowl, in the bowl cavern, um, and then right there it goes right into early Sumerian, I think, time frame. So this is something we'll be using in a right. couple of weeks when we start the ancient civilizations. It's the essential guide for painting, sculpture, photography, music, and dance. Absolutely. So I think that's really kind of fun. So um, going with the theme, we will have a continuous theme of the boy in the cave who wants to paint. Um, this is uh, the yeah. Let's show the picture. This is, is the, the the first drawing. The first drawing. So it was a young boy who had a desire to paint, wanted to paint in the caves. Um, saw the world in pictures and wanted to explore that. Um, got up and close and personal with, with the things that he was making and actually finally I think he got, got into that was his dreams there and then eventually he got face to face with a giant mammoth so he could and eventually paint that and when he painted it onto the wall it shocked his family uh, the people in the caves that, that you know he could take that vision of the reality and put it on the wall for them yeah. to enjoy. Really fun just a simple little um, book that had a nice little story about a young boy who wanted to uh, to paint what he saw and 
that creativity. And this was at a really great for first grade yep. level. So if you're looking for it, a lot of the books that we've talked in, talking about, we're having to kind of bring down to a first grade yep. level, but this is right on the money. So. so one of the most famous caves in the world is the Lascaux Caves in France. Mm -hmm. um, and then this goes ahead and tells the story of the discovery of that. Now, I did not know that it was first discovered in 1940, right when the F French were fighting the, the Germans. Um, some oh, boys, yeah, some boys found, found a felled tree and they had a hole at the bottom of them that, that was a little bit larger than what the roots for the tree was. And kids, kids those days, come on, let's just climb down the hole. <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to end well. Let's explore. Well, it did. And it, uh, what, what it did is it, uh, they found their way into one of the ends of the Lascaux caves and they went all the way through and then they found their friend, their, their teacher, um, and they, they said, well, you know, we're, we're not doing well as a country right now. We're having some other struggles. Let's try to keep this quiet. Um, they kind of covered it up and eventually they were able to come back and it became obviously the, the national heritage site that it is. Um, wonderful, massive cavern. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Mm -hmm. um, but this is just basically a very simple book about that. And then it goes as like kind of a, a jump back to when they were actually building uh, the scaffolding and actually making the images. So it actually... It showed how do you get you know these beautiful images 20 feet up in the air. Well, they were actually building scaffolding 12,000 years ago in order to paint these caves. So it showed a lot more intentionality, kind mm -hmm. of changed that, that image of what you thought of a cave painter um, to be in something a little bit more intentional. That I, I really enjoyed how they did this. And it's just a very simple book you could read in about 10 minutes or so. I love these step into reading books. You can get them usually for five bucks or yep. something or less. Uh, so really good investment, especially Absolutely. if you have longer, younger re, uh, learners with yep. you. Um, History of Western Art and Comics, Part 1. This is a, we, we um, read only the first like two or three pages because um, it's a story about a grandfather coming uh, to meet his uh, you know, grandchildren. He's coming in from the countryside into Paris uh, where the kids want to take him to all these art museums and everything. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, maybe we should start at the beginning and talking about ancient art, sculpture, um, early paintings. It was very, you know, just kind of a fun, um, enjoyable way of, of kind of telling the story of, right. of, of the art. We so only... you like have, a, have learners that like graphic yeah. novels, and if you've done any of the previous books where mm -hmm. they've done the, we, we've done a couple of graphic novels about the different Cenozoic, yep, and yep. Um, if, if you kind of like that style, oh, this yeah. would be right in the line. Cre yeah, those, those great books on the um, Precambrian times, um, mm -hmm. like the, I think it was Silurian period, and then into the dinosaur period, there were those great comic books. I think maybe we'll, we'll link those as well. But yeah, definitely had a couple, they called out very specific discoveries um, that might interest you to go do some deeper dives. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't just like general information. They actually called out a couple very specific um, uh, like little figurines that they had found. So you can go ahead and Google those and actually see pictures of those that actually, you know, they actually exist. Fun. So that's kind of a cool way to kind of give you some ideas to springboard. But this was, yeah, it was good. It was, it was enjoyable. It was, right. quick, it was quick. We only covered the first few pages. Well, and you can use it. Uh, this is covers from prehistory to the Renaissance. Yep. So if you wanted to do something a little bit more fun and not quite as studious as, uh, you know, maybe your learners mm -hmm. like something a little bit more playful with art, this might be a good option for you. We have another chapter book. We finished Maru, and we went on to The Boy of the Painted Cave. So and Yeah, and the reason that we moved Maru, if you watched our video a couple times ago, a couple of videos ago, um, was because this one had to do with art, and so we specifically wanted to do it during this week. So this is a story of a young boy, um, outcast, uh, uh, has a little bit of an issue with his foot. He was born with kind of a little, uh, slight uh, disability. Um, his name is Tao, and he has a very intense desire to be a painter, um, And but his tribe does not like painters. Um, people painting or, or doing anything like that. He's kind of an outcast, kind of goes off and does his own thing, finds a cave and begins to do his own art, ends up making friends with the the, the elder who's the cave painter, Greybeard, and he ends up showing uh, Tao how to paint and, and learn how to do that. Meanwhile, Tao is out there hunting, bringing food in for his, his clan, um, and he befriends a dog, classic, uh, Ram. The dog. Is his, the Ram is his friend. And there comes to this like head where he has got to try to survive this this test and challenge and um, very tense, very fun, very short read of it. I think it was about 160 pages. So um, the, the text is actually a little bit uh, 
uh, larger font than Maru, so you may be able to read it faster. Each we, chapter is about... We read it over two weeks. We yeah. started it uh, this week during prehistoric art and carried it into the following Most week. of the chapter is about eight or nine pages long, so you can breeze through it pretty quickly if you're reading like you know one during the day and one at nighttime. So definitely get through it. It was very enjoyable. There's a little bit of like a lot of description, um, so it might be a little description heavy. If that like kind of tires you, you I, I found like sometimes you just could like read ahead real quick and you go, oh, that, and just kind of skip that. <laughs> you're just doing it again. Um, other than that, um, it was a really good read. Uh, there was some, a lot of talk of like dismembering animals and, and processing them for food. So again, there, you know, content warning there. Right. Um, but, but this was fun. This was very enjoyable. This was actually written a long time ago. I think in the forties, I looked up the author. Oh, really? Um, yeah. He wrote this a long time ago and he wrote a whole bunch of these books. So it, it was really fun. It was, it's kind of like a, you know, a light read. Yeah. yeah. Kind of, kind of neat to add in another small chapter um, book. From there, we went ahead and did some videos. Um, there's a wonderful channel called Rare Earth. I, I've, I've been following this channel for a couple of years. And in there, they, he has a, um, an episode about this cave uh, art. It, it's actually a cave. It's actually an outcropping in Somalia called Las Gilles. And he had a wonderful um, kind of a seven-minute video about that. And we'll go ahead and link that in the show notes. Mm -hmm. Very con You found it while you were doing our Africa resource yeah. guide, which we're working on. We're promised we're working on it. It was funny. It was very similar. He found it. And he was like, oh, I'm we need this, this next, next week. week. <laughs> and so, yeah, I was like, this is perfect. Um, very great, uh, great essay, uh, kind of an audio essay on the importance of art and, and what what things like Lasquille or Lasco mm -hmm. or I, don't know, I always screw up the name, but the one in Spain and what they mean to, you know, the shape of humanity. And if you have a little bit of an older learner, um, they might be able to understand the, the the weight of these sites and how important they are and not just like, oh, they just look like somebody smudged some paint on a wall, but it's like the the age of that and what that meant at a time frame. He gave a really nice little like video about it. It was really amazing. And it's it's amazing to see these paintings that are on this outcropping in the middle of a desert. They're not even a cave. It's just on an outcropping. They've been sitting there for five or 6,000 years and they were just recently discovered. Amazing. So. And we'll link that in the show notes because it was Absolutely. a really neat video. Um, if you want, if, if, <clears throat> if your spouse loves the soothing sounds of Werner Herzog and you want her to take a, take a nap, there is a wonderful movie called The Cave of Forgotten Dreams where Werner Herzog did a documentary about the Lascaux Cave. And it's a beautiful documentary. Um, can be a little bit of slow at times, so if your learner wants a little bit more action, that may not be their speed. But you can also watch it in chunks. Chunks and stuff. Um, but I just, Werner Herzog is like uh, ambient for me. <laughs> um, I really, his voice just works that way for me. So I saw only pieces of it, yeah. but I hear good things from you and from our daughter that it was really good. Save that woman, she's falling asleep. <laughs> I can't, I can't control it, you guys. Can't control it. I hear his voice and I just... Yeah, she lulls me to lulls sleep. Lulls to sleep. Um, then we went ahead and did some activities, and, and, and going with the boy in the painted cave, how he was using you know clay and burnt charcoal and, and natural materials. We went ahead and started trying to do that. So I went dug into my uh, my art caddy, and I found some uh, willow charcoal, and so I gave that to my daughter, and she was able to do the bowl from Spain, and mm -hmm. then she did the Las Guil drawing, the famous man uh, in front of the, I don't even know what it is, it's its like a goat type of animal, um, and so she was able to do them, and her fingers yeah. smudged the paint and uh, the charcoal, and she enjoyed that. She was able to do the coloring and do the shadowing. She had a really good time doing this, and, and I was able to open those really beautiful books to the really big pictures and spreads, and she was able to do a lot of this. So this was a, a fun week using real material. She was really shocked that she was actually using like burnt wood. Yeah. Just like Tao in the... And she uh, was really excited to tell me each night about the different colors she could make out of natural materials. Yeah. Um, where, and Where do I find ochre? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so it was really cool. Uh, this was a fun week and I think it was nice to do. Yeah. We've, we've done so much kind of Kind of science heavy through mm -hmm. this whole study and to take a step back and just focus on on culture mm -hmm. was really really cool yep so we, we really enjoyed it, it was so a fun week next week is a wrap-up week we're we're coming in out into uh i think it's blossom and root blossom and root's final, final week. week it's gonna be a light week so we have kind of a short week and we'll we'll, we'll report back <laughs> and then we'll be done with the history it's the yes. end of history yeah. it's the end of history guys we can go home it's all over <laughs> wrap it up wrap it up um, and there's no we, point to go from here when we finish we'll have only, a few wrap up videos for it's you only too. bloody all the way down from here <laughs> we'll see you guys next time <laughs>